were less than four blocks from the whole thing. And it just started shattering windows, roof, little children being blown everywhere. I remember Miss McClure, our teacher, running and hollering, and she was screaming, and we were screaming, and she was throwing kids out the window, telling her, go home, go home. We all, when we finally got out the windows and things, and Miss McClure was throwing us out the windows and things, and the wall was caving in, everybody started running, looking for their mothers and their fathers. Now, there's a couple of theories behind that. Some people thought that the Japanese were pulling another sneak attack. Other people thought the war was coming to the end, and the younger people just didn't know what was happening. And they said, run. That's all I remember, because I was so sort of scared. And I stayed right across the street. your house? Probably yeah, it was, was right across the school. street. But I was too afraid to even go. They say, run. So I came out, and we just came out and ran across the fields and fields and doing that. We could see fire and hear and things shot going on. Years old. I was just right. And then there were people passing me with their arms hanging out, bloody, some people. Uh, it was a nightmare. Uh, when it first exploded, uh, I was on the porch, and if you can say, it was a beautiful golden flame, a big flame of the air, beautiful. I was, um, and it was so exciting standing there with my mother watching it. I had my brother and uh, wanted to go down to see the fire. He went down to the, to the fire. My dad had went to work, would have been working out there, but he got bumped out, and he was back at home. And they were out in the yard with my brother going, going getting ready to go fishing. And my, I am the 11th child of Elmore and Oliver Swan. Wow. And we're the largest family in Texas City. My mother had 18 children, 17 of us lived. And before the disaster, it was nine, it was nine of us in school that went after, later on in the year. But um, that, that was, uh, all of a sudden, there was a big black cloud. The whole town got dark. And when the, um, when the explosion went off, my mother grabbed my hand. I ran away from her, went out the back door, and started running down the street. Didn't know where I was going. And in the air was seemed like a bale of hay, a bale of something was coming towards me. And I just ran mm -hmm. and got in the Milton, Dave Milton's car. And went going up Texas, up 6th Street, saw my sister Rose and uh, asked her to get in the car. She wouldn't. She and I uh, was sitting right at the left side of the school right by the window when I felt a little shaking and going on. I just looked up like that and I could see a lot of debris flying over. And the next thing, I, the glass came in on my head, you know, and uh, hit my leg and uh, cut me a little bit on, on, on one of my legs down here. And uh, so everybody began to disperse out of the school. And I live about uh, block and a half from Booker T. So uh, my grandmother was sick during this time. So I remember running back to the house to see about her. And I met her and my auntie about halfway coming down the alley. And we come on out to uh, First Avenue South. Somebody passed in the truck. But we got on the back of did. it. They took us down to Lincoln uh, School. They had set up a uh, uh, Temporary uh, uh, where they shelter, yeah, yeah, and they went in there and they cleaned the glass and stuff out of my. All I can remember is that we was playing around in school, and uh, and all of a sudden uh, uh, the dust from the floor, big big boom, came up, you know, uh, big, as Lynn had indicated, and all the dust from the floor came up, and and the windows were, you know, were. Falling. Some windows fell on several classmates, and, uh, and and we took off and we started running because we didn't know what was going on. So we took off. So by the time we got right down uh, on first from the school, uh, you know, I, I started to go home. Somebody said, "Well, any sense to go home? Go, I tell your mother, your mother, somebody will take your mother out on 18th or somewhere out there, 18th Street, back up north." And uh, and uh, a lot of people were were bleeding, you know, from from being cut. And uh, <laughs> that's when I found out that uh, that a girl could outrun me, Dr. Pearl could outrun me. She she blew right by me, you know. And uh, we we went on down on 18th, and we we uh, we left town. We went out to uh, to uh, you know where where my parents were from, you know, the Warden County area.
And after that, if you were to do research in the city of Texas City right now, from 1911 to 2011, you will find out that there are very few pictures of the African American disaster era. Uh, I've only seen one picture, and that was a Bobby Jefferson standing in front of old first Bob Barbara Chapel hanging a wreath, and she was a girl about maybe nine or ten years old then. At that time, I made a special point to go through looking for anything and everything, but you all see pictures of, of firemen and volunteer firemen and all the people coming in, but you don't see any pictures of African Americans doing anything during the Texas City disaster. Now, our history is important to us because this is where we came from. This is where many of our ancestors and families started out here. But everything is being plowed up under. Our churches are being moved. Our, and, uh, our school is, is, is and, no uh, longer uh, uh, in service. Our old original neighborhoods where all of us come from sitting here, they are being depleted, torn down. That's why a lot of our former students do not come back anymore because they cannot bear the picture of seeing where their mothers and fathers and so forth got up and worked hard by the sweat of their brow, not so much of their brain, because at every time the job that you had to have was by the sweat of your brow. And, and they won't come back because everything had been just simply torn down and maybe put a little sign or mark 